In this section of chapter 21, I would like to discuss about nuclear reactor, fusion reaction, biological effects of radiation, and modern usage of radiation. Nuclear reactor has following components. First, you must have a fuel there, and uranium-235, which has to be enriched from 0.7% to about 3%. So natural sources usually have about 0.7%, but which is not good enough for nu nuclear power plant. So that's why enrichment is necessary. That forms the critical mass for chain reaction. Second component is control rods. And these are the rods made up of cadmium and boron that are used to control fission reaction and it absorbs neutron. Remember neutron helps in this chain reaction. So if something absorbs neutron, that means it's going to stop the nuclear reaction. The third component is moderator or cooling liquid. You know that in nuclear reaction, especially in fission reaction that we're discussing here for nuclear, nuclear power plant, it gives a significant amount of energy. So you must have a liquid there which you transfer that heat energy and that way reaction core doesn't get overheated. And you can also make use of that uh, heat in boiling water to steam which I'm discussing next. So basically you need to have a cooling liquid. Water or liquid sodium is used to slow down neutrons and also at the same time it transfers heat to steam generator. So there are two purposes of cooling liquid. One is to slow down neutron. If you have fast neutron, say for example, if this is my nucleus of uranium-235, if the neutron is coming too fast, it will just pass through and it's not going to cause fission reaction. So you must slow down the neutron so that it can get inside the nucleus and then transfers its energy and finally breaks down the nucleus into two big chunks of masses. The fourth component is steam generator, which produces steam that runs turbine and generates electricity. The major problem is radioactive products and the disposal problem. In this slide, you're looking at a nuclear reactor and the reactor core, which I'm showing you with the red arrow, that has the fuel, uranium oxide, uranium-235, and where nuclear reaction begins and heat is generated there. When heat is generated because of the fission reaction, the liquid that's pumped through it transfers that heat to the next chamber which has liquid water. When liquid water gets that heat, it boils into steam and then steam goes to the right and runs turbine and then turbine, because when turbine moves, it generates electricity. And then finally, the steam loses its energy and condenses back to the liquid. And this is how the whole thing runs. So as you can see, tremendous amount of heat that is given off in reactor core has to be removed quite fast. Otherwise, the whole reactor core is going to melt. Now we're showing you a number of fusion reactions. In this case, a small nuclei are fused together with substantial increase in binding energy per nucleon. So we have explained that before. So these are the examples of fusion reaction. Two hydrogen could be fused together into deuterium and energy is given off, significant amount of energy is given off. Or hydrogen and deuterium can form helium-3 or even helium-3 and helium-3 can give form helium-4 and energy is given off. So 
fusion reaction provides sig significant amount of energy, but there is a major problem involved here. Since you are fusing positive charges, you need tremendous amount of energy. Otherwise, they, they are going to repel each other and they cannot come in contact. To begin such a reaction, one needs a large amount of energy. So about 40 million Kelvin of temperature is needed. So that tremendous amount of energy is needed for to, to begin this kind of reaction. But there is an advantage here. Products are either not radioactive or have a very low level of radioactivity. If you look at the products, the very low level of radioactivity or no radioactivity at all. So waste to disposal is not a problem here. In order to discuss biological effect of rad radiation, we first decided to go over alpha, beta, and gamma as ionizing radiations and their effect on living tissues. Now, living tissues contain more than 70% of water, and radiation can interact with water, knocking off its electron. Water and H2O plus can give free radical OH. And these free radicals are highly reactive and also give undesirable reaction. In addition, radiation can also knock off electron from an enzyme, which is responsible for responsible for a lot of biological activities. So when enzyme gets ionized, it loses its activity. Now radiation dosage, rad is defined to be due to absorption of one times 10 to the negative two joule of energy per kilogram of tissue. Gray unit deals with absorption of one joule per kilogram of tissue. Now biological effectiveness is based on two quantities, rad amount of energy being absorbed and relative biological effectiveness. So that's like wind chill factor in winter time that when there is no wind, there is one kind of effect. When there is wind, there's a different type of effect. This RBE depends, up, depends upon what kind of particle is, uh, that what particle is coming out and entering through the living organism. RB for beta and gamma is one, RB for alpha is 10. Inside the cells, so alpha is 10 times more damaging than beta or gamma. Here we are also defining a unit called sievert, which is equals to 100 rem. So keep that in mind, rem is given by rad times RBE. So it's not just the energy of the radiation that causes biological harm, it's also what type of particle is entering in, in our body. Through this cartoon character, I'm trying to explain to you how alpha particle behaves when it's outside. Our skin prevents it from entering into our body. So it's like this is the alpha is like a big guy and there is a small small door so it, he cannot get inside. On the other hand, beta and gamma can re readily get inside and cause the damage. Now once alpha particle is inside the body, now how can it go inside if it cannot go through skin? Well, if you, you can eat something and you may have some alpha emitting particles or alpha emitting substances with the food and then alpha would be 
available inside the body, it is 10 times more damaging when it's inside. So RBE equals to 10. Again, we can understand it like this. There are quite a few cells. If these represent cell, as alpha goes through the cell, it's going to knock off cells. I mean, they would knock off electron from different cells and cells would lose its activity. It's like, this is the big guy. He's trying to go through the crowd and he's going to knock people off on right side as well as left side. So cause a lot of damage. On the other hand, if this is a skinny guy who is trying to go through the crowd, he can find enough passage to cut through without much problem. Same is the case when beta and gamma is outside. It doesn't cause as much damage as alpha does. So RBE, relative biological effectiveness for beta or gamma is 1, whereas in case of alpha is 10 times greater. Here we are giving you unit of activity. One Curie is 3.7 times 10 to the power 10 disintegration per second. And Becquerel is one disintegration per second. Now here you're seeing that natural, from natural sources, how much radiation we can get. Now that's on an average figure you can see this is the annual exposure that we get, no matter whether we want or not. Radon. In many basements, this has been a big problem. Radio, radon is radioactive. It gives off radiation continuously. And because of this, we get it from the ground, all these radioactive uh, radon. Our Total exposure on an average is about 200 milliram, which is about 50% of all the exposure that we get. Rocks and soil account for about 8%. Cosmic ray coming from outside of solar system or even solar system is about 8%. And we have different radioisotopes in our body, like carbon-14 is one of them, which accounts for about 11% of total exposure. Medical x-rays, your dental x-rays, or various other reasons you take x-rays, which also accounts for about 11%. And from medicine or other consumer products, you have about 4% and 3% respectively. Now there are some benefits that we must mention. So far we discussed about harmful effects of radiation, but there are some medicinal applications too. Cancer treatment for which cobalt-60 or CCM-137 are used, and gamma rays, these emit gamma rays, and those gamma rays can kill the cancer cells. But the bad part is it can also kill healthy cells. So these days, scientists and doctors are trying to focus gamma ray from cesium or cobalt to only cancer cells. Secondly, in diagnostic purposes also, radioactive isotopes are used. Blood clotting, for example. Say, this is the blood vessel, and there is a clot in here. So if the patient gets iodine-131 or thallium-201, they're radioactive. So you may have different concentration of thallium-201 on this side of the blockage than the other side. If you have the higher percentage on one side and lower percentage on the other side, that means there is a blockage in between. Different radiations are also used for mutation purposes. Sometimes through mutation, one can get a better kind of seeds, better kind of fruits. So gamma from cobalt could be used to develop disease-resisting and highly productive grains. And 
scientists have been doing experiments on these and they are they have succeeded in doing that in many in many cases preservation purposes also gamma radiation could be very useful so scientists found out that when they expose a piece of meat say for example this is a piece of meat it's all packed and then you expose it to gamma ray gamma ray is going to kill all the bacteria then you can have this meat package outside without even refrigeration it would remain good for a long long time of course if there is any hole there then of course it's going to go bad because bacteria can get in we also talked about radioactive dating you can know the uh, age of a, uh, of a rock sample or age of uh, an organism which which could be dead like organism might have died some thousands of years ago